Good morning. As you know, we have been discussing about the unit 4. Unit 4 consists of two parts. The first is the well foundation and second is the retaining wall. We have completed the well foundation. Under the well foundation, we have talked about components of the well foundation various shapes of well foundation what are the forces acting on the well and those forces are considered in the design of well foundation we have also talked about the construction of well foundation and we have also discussed about the tilt and shifts for the well foundation. So well foundation is completed. So today we shall start the retaining wall. So that is called as earth retaining structures. Right? Suppose whenever we talk about the earth retaining structure, that means what? The structure which are going to retain the earth. Earth means soil. So there are two types of earth retaining structure. One is called a rigid retaining structure and another is called as flexible retaining structures. We shall talk one by one. The first one is the rigid retaining structure. Under this heading, we shall talk about the types of retaining walls. The first type of retaining wall is gravity retaining walls. Where we can use a reta retaining wall? One example wherever is, there is a chance of landslide, we can construct a retaining wall. At many locations, uh, we need the retaining wall. Suppose your plot is in low, uh, low land area. Right? So in that case, what we can do? We can fill, the, fill our low land area and uh, construct uh, the retaining wall on both the sides. Then we shall fill this wire, right? And above the filled up area, we can go for the constructions. So what is happening? The retaining wall which you have constructed at your plot is going to retain the soil as well as the structure which you have constructed at filled up area. That means the retaining structure is going to experience horizontal stresses, horizontal force, right? So gravity retaining walls, uh, these walls depend upon their weight of for stability. This is made up of either concrete or bricks, but it takes the load or we can say it retains the earth by its own weight right and it can go up to 2 meter high weight 2 meter height it is constructed by plain concrete or machinery PCC reinforcement is not used right so it is called a gravity retaining wall it is not economical for large heights why it is not economical because you need more concrete Right? Because uh, 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 it is going to take the earth load by its own weight only. Next is called as semi gravity retaining wall. In this case, you can see the size of the section of a gravity retaining wall can be reduced if a small amount of reinforcement is provided near the back face. You can see uh, in this retaining wall, the back face uh, means right hand side you can see the reinforcement is provided. If you are going to provide the reinforcement, we do not need more concrete. The thickness can be reduced. Such walls are called as semi-gravity walls. The next is 
कैंट लिवर रिटेनिंग वॉल्स इन दिस केस वी कैन सी द फिगर दिस द टॉप पार्ट इज स्टेम एस टी एम स्टेम इज देयर एंड बिस इज ऑल्सो देयर सो वॉट यू से डेट कैंट लिवर रिटेनिंग वॉल्स आर मेड ऑफ अब रिनकूर सीमेंट कंक्रीट द वाल कंसिस्ट ऑफ वर्टिकल और इनक्लाइंड स्टेम the top one is the vertical stem it may be inclined also and base slab cast monolithically cast cast monolithically means the reinforcement of the base slab and the reinforcement of the stem or vertical stem will be jointed together <coughs> will be cast together that is called a monolithically This type this type of wall is found to be economical up to a height of six to eight meters. You can see if you are going to use the cantilever retaining walls, the height is also going to increase. The next is called as counter foot retaining walls. Counter foot retaining walls have the the thin vertical slab. You can see the vertical slab is also there, thin vertical slabs. Known as counter forts, counter forts, spaced across the vertical stem at regular intervals. You can see this retaining wall. The vertical stem is there, base slab is there, right? And uh, behind the retaining wall, a another reinforced work has also been carried out. That is called as carried out. That is called as counter fort. so see it is also going to take the load of the vertical stem right and it is placed at regular interval the counter forts tie the vertical stem with the base slabs right the purpose of providing counter forts is to reduce the shear force and bending moments in the vertical stem and the base slabs definitely if you are going to use this uh, counter forts the vertical stem of the wall retaining wall as well as the base slabs will carry more bending moment and shear force the that advantage there by the counter fort retaining The counter fort retaining walls are economical for a height of more than six to eight meters. Retaining walls are constructed in various fields of civil engineering. We can see, as I told in the beginning, the example for the landslides in the, wherever the landslide is there, we can go for the retaining walls. It is not like that. You can use for the water reservoir also. You see. Where uh, uh, it can be used, hydraulic and irrigation structures, highways. There also we can use the retaining wall. Suppose you are constructing the embankment for roads or the railways. At some, at the some locations, you can use the retaining walls. Railways for railways also we can use. Tunnels also we can use. mining and military engineering services we can use now we shall go for the flexible retaining structure you see the two two figures are there the left hand side and right hand side and it is written there seat pile wall cantilever type cantilever you know that uh, fixed free the bottom part is fixed and the top part is free that's why it is called as cantilever and the pile pile whenever we talk about the pile pile does not mean that it is going to take only vertical load it can take the horizontal load also and this pile in the form of a seat the seat may be made up of either steel concrete or timber so what it says here cantilever seat pile walls anchored bulk head and braced supports for excavation are examples of flexible retaining structures cantilever seat pile walls anchored bulkhead 
bulk head is nothing but bulk head is also called a seat pipe so anchored means what you can see the second figure right hand side the same seat pile wall is there and but behind the wall that means inside the soil it has been anchored so that and the left hand side what you can see what you are going to see the, the water it is uh, water is also stored there so left hand side water is there right hand side soil is there and this seat pile wall, uh, pile wall is anchored so that it can be more stable it can take the more lateral stays or horizontal stays that is called an anchor bulkhead and brace supports for excavation are example both brace supports for excavation what do you mean by brace supports i will tell you in the next slides so cantilever seat pile walls are held in the ground by the passive resistance of the soil both in front of and behind you can see the first figure the left hand side the soil is also there that means what this pile is driven the seat pile is driven in this soil so left hand side also soil is there right hand soil is also right hand side uh, also soil is there up to the top okay so that's it says that in front and behind the seat pile soil is there and uh, it is uh, it is working as a water reservoir Passive resistance means what? Passive resistance we have also uh, already studied uh, in earth pressure chapter. Active state, passive state, active earth pressure, passive earth pressure. Active state means away from the field. Passive state means towards the field. So here, from you can see both the side soil is there, right? At, at the bottom of the pile is driven in the soil. So from both the sides passive resistance is uh, working there and uh, based on that it is retaining in the soil anchor seat pile walls or bulkhead is fixed at its base uh, as a cantilever wall but supported by tie rods near the top as i told in the beginning that it is anchored the right hand side is anchored so that it will experience it will feel it will take more horizontal stresses. It will be stable. It, it is not going to damage. You can also say in such a way. Because both the side, the right hand side, soil pressure is there. Left hand side, water pressure is there. You can see the breast cut. What do you mean by breast cut? Breast cut is nothing but an excavation supported by suitable bracing systems are called breast cut. These excavation support systems are used too. Breast cuts means you can see, suppose some loose ground is there and you want to go for uh, the construction of shallow foundation. Let us take one example, then I will tell you about all the other points. Loose ground is there, you are going to excavate this soil. For the shallow foundation. So once uh, excavation is over, right, and uh, what will happen? Because the ground is loose, so soil will fill, soil will uh, uh, will come in the uh, the excavated area. That means what? The excavated 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 part will not remain vacant. The soil will fall in the excavated area or in the trench. So in that case, you will not be able for the Further construction. That's why we have to go for the seat supports. That is called a breast cut. Breast cut means the cut means the excavation, and breast means support. In the simple way you can understand. Breast minus breast breast means support, and cut means excavation. The support which you are going to provide in for the excavation is called a breast cut. You can see what are the various supports are there. Seat piles on the both the sides of the both the sides seat pile is there. And the struts is also provided. The well, well is nothing but this is a longitudinal wooden plank has been given for the support, right? So three things are there in this breast cuts. What what benefits are there by the breast cuts? Minimize the excavation area. Keep the sides of deep excavation stable. Suppose 
on the left hand side or right hand side this ground is loosed but on the left hand side and right hand side some structures are already constructed and you are going to excavate this one and the, the, the ground is loose. What will happen? The soil will come to the excavated area and the, the foundation, the structure which is available adjacent to this excavated area will also become weak. Right? So, once you are going to provide the seed pile wall on left hand side and right hand side, the structures will also feel support. So that, that, that means give the sides of deep, uh, deep excavation as uh, 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 excavation is stable. Ensure that movements of soil will not cause any damage to the neighboring structure, which I told you, or utilities of the surrounding grounds. The left hand side and the right hand side, whatever the structures are there, they are not going to be disturbed. And we shall put the support using the seed pile wall, struts, and then we can uh, go for construction in the excavated area. So this, this uh, uh, is called a breast cut. Breast cut means the cut means excavation. The excavation which is going to be supported is called as breast cut. In a simple way you can understand. Now we shall go for the what are the types of seed pile walls. We, we, we have been talking about the flexible structure, flexible earth structures. What we saw? In case of breast cut also, we need the seed pile. In case of uh, the cantilever seed pile or anchor, anchored bulkhead, bulkhead is not the seed pile only. We need the pile, seed pile in the form of a seat we can see. So what are the various types of uh, 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 seats which are available or uh, being manufactured uh, manufactured in the different factories in the form of a uh, seed pile. So, based on the materials, timber seed piles are also available. The timber piles are mostly used for temporary structures such as breast seating in cuts, that means in excavated area, where depth does not exceed 3 meters. It is used for short spans to receive the lateral, light lateral loads. Right? You can see the right hand side, the figure is there, the wooden plank and how the, it is going to be jointed together if you want to extend up to some more distance, right? You want to increase the longitudinal length. In that case, how it is going to be jointed, groove and tongue joints. If it is used as a permanent structure above water level, it requires preservative treatment, but its span of life is relatively short. See, if you want to use in water or above the water, the wood is there. As you know, below the water, the wood is not going to rotten. Not going to rotten. It will not be dotted. But uh, on the top part, the, the exposed part, the, it will start rotting. It will start uh, damaging. So in that case, we have to use some paint or preservatives for its longevity, for its, uh, uh, for increase its life. And the timber piles join to each other by tongue and groove joints. You can see in the figure how the, the, the joints are also made and this uh, uh, then it is, uh, the length can be increased. Similarly, reinforced concrete seed piles are also available. These piles, precast concrete members, it is also precasted with a tongue and groove joint. This, you can see the joint and reinforcements are also shown in the figure. These piles are relatively heavy and large, definitely, because concrete is there, steel is there, so it will become heavier compared to the, the, wood, uh, the timber piles, timber seed piles. And when you are going to drive, in the earth, inside the earth, from the ground surface, it will displace, displace large volume of soil, causes increase in driving resistance. Increase in driving resistance means what? Definitely, if, if you are going to drive, it will not go easily inside the earth. Hence, designed with suitable enforcement. 
if uh, the, the, the suitable reinforcement, sufficient reinforcement you have to give, otherwise it will break, it will crack. It is used in fine sand and very soft sand. Why? Because in fine sand or soft sand, sand it will go easily. If you are going to drive the seed pile, it will go easily inside the earth. And for tougher soils, the concrete piles break off. So this is all about the reinforced concrete seed. The next is the steel seed piles. This is better, better than concrete seed piles and the timber pile. For permanent structure, and for uh, depth of uh, for depth of driving greater than three meter, seat piles are more suitable. What does it mean? If you are going to drive the seat piles inside the earth, it will not break. Its life will also be more, and it is relatively watertight, no leakage of water from one side to the other side and can be extracted if required and reused. You can take it out from the earth and then you can reuse it at some other place. This is also possible. The cost of a steel seed piles is more than that of a timber piles, but it is mostly used in practice. As I told you, the timber pile is also there, concrete seed pile is also there, but the steel seed piles are mostly used in practice because it can be driven also easily there is no chance of break right but here also if we have to go for the preservative we can paint it so that its life will increase so this is uh, all about uh, uh, this topic today uh, about the rigid retaining structure and the flexible retaining structures so tomorrow we shall start the new topics thank you very much